All right, everybody, hope everyone's doing well today. I'm gonna to go ahead and share my screen and we're gonna kind of take a deeper dive today into designs. Um, now, who uses designs on the call? I, I know a lot of you do because I see your posts, but um, Dee Dee, what's been your experience with designs? Oh, I'm on mute you, go ahead. Still muted, you might have to unmute yourself there, Dee Dee. Go ahead. I love it. Um, I have been doing a lot of them, especially for open houses. Um, but I was having issues through campaigns, and so Scott Leroy went through, and I guess there was a bug in my thing, and he went through and fixed it all. So I haven't done it through campaigns yet, but I'm getting ready to do that this weekend. Okay. But I love Good. using designs, and I love the new pivot ones. They're awesome. Good. I think one of the main things you hit on there, and then I, I think some other, someone else raised their hand, one of the other nice parts of this is they are starting to implement it into other applets within command. There was a point there for a long time where you create something on designs and you had to download it and then upload it to another section of command. They're all starting to talk to each other now, which is making it a little bit easier. And I'll show you a couple of those connections today. Anyone else use designs or have any sort of thoughts or input on it? Yeah, we've been, we've been using a lot for Facebook ads. Perfect. Okay, good. Uh, how many Canva users do we have? Can you raise a hand? Anybody use Canva? Program Canva at all? All right, few. All right, so I find it very similar to that if you've um, if you used that program before. The advantage, even before we get into the designs, the advantage of this over Canva would be a couple things. One, it's not generic templates. You're getting real estate templates created on your behalf by the design team at KW. They're constantly being updated. And the other big advantage is you have, a, you have a point of entrance into the MLS. So we can get photos and data directly into designs from the MLS rather than having to upload all that information yourself. So to me, those are the two big advantages. I get that question sometimes about you know, designs. So we're gonna spend 99% uh, of our time today in the designs applet. So uh, here on my screen, you should be able to see the little design symbol. It looks like a little easel. And we're gonna go ahead and click into designs. Now, I'm gonna start actually without, uh, not on the marketing materials. We're actually gonna talk about websites for just a second. And the reason why we're, why we're gonna to touch on this is because some of you have noticed that when you create a web page or a landing page, you no longer can edit it in the consumer section. So we did a class last week on creating web pages and landing pages, and then you'll try to edit the page there and it only says like delete, right? People are going like, where can I edit my page? So they've moved that to designs. So you'll see here now in designs, this little header up here. And as long as you see this header, you're in the right spot. These are all of my saved designs. You'll see in this header now, you've got an agent site button here, and you also have a landing page button here. So if I created a website page and I published it and I wanted to edit that page, I would come to designs, click on agent site, and then here's the names of my different pages that I've created for my website. And from here, I can simply click on the tile and go edit that page. Make sense? So I just wanted to point that out. This is now where you edit all of the website pages for your KW website. And it's the same thing for the landing page. Now, hopefully you guys notice here, when we teach that class, I talk about naming the page. Don't let it be the generic name that KW gives it. Because if you do, it's gonna look like this. <laughs> Right, and you've got all these different tiles here. You have no idea which landing page this is because you didn't change the name to something more specific. So that's why I tell you to do that. So you can identify the page. I've sat here for hours because I have 42 landing pages. I've literally sat here for hours clicking on each one to find the landing page that I'm trying to edit. So I, I don't know which, which the actual one is. Okay, so quick little tip there. But you still create them on the consumer site? Good question, yes, exactly. So you still create them on the consumer side. This is just once they're created, where you come to edit them. Now I did have a question yesterday I don't, I don't, uh, on the call. Remember, for anyone who was on the call yesterday, we had the question where we couldn't find our web page to select it, because I'd said we only can max out of 10. So this is where I'd said, come back here and delete some of those pages that you don't use and keep it as only the pages that you're, you're using basically. All right, so that was a quick little aside. That's kind of the first thing I want to touch on in designs. Okay, so um, just know that when you come into design, so when you first come in, it shows you all of your different types of designs, okay, here. Um, so it's gonna bring in all of the different types of designs. And then if you want to, and you can say, hey, I just wanna go look at my videos, you can click on video, right? And it'll take you to just your videos. If you wanna go see just your social posts, 
click on social and it'll take you into just your social post. Now, the reason I point that out is, is because you can make a copy of a design. And I, I find that people aren't doing this. They're kind of recreating the design from scratch every single time. So you'll see in just a minute that when I create a design, it takes a few minutes to put my headshot, my contact information, right? All of those things on that page. So let's just say I like the design of this postcard right here. If I had already edited it with all my information, instead of starting from scratch on my new listing, you can just come here and do make a copy, and then I can just change the address and the photo and not start from scratch. Okay, so I see a couple people clapping their hands like that was a good thing. So I hope that was- If I'd have known that, that would have saved me so much freaking time. Perfect, so you can just get off the call. This has all been worth it. Have a great day. I'm joking, all right? Also, this is, you can see here when I click these three little dots, I can also rename it, okay? So if you wanted to go back and organize some of your different marketing pieces and rename them, and you also have the opportunity here to delete it out permanently, just to kind of clean up your system like anything else, it doesn't get too busy. I will point out at the bottom here, uh, it says viewing one of nine of 149, so I've created 149 social pieces. Most of that's been through training. If you click on one through nine, you can do the drop down where you can see more in one screen. So it's almost like in the contact section where it starts from one to 10 and we can go one to 50. You can say, I want to see more of my designs and you can click on and see more of them in a one single view instead of having to click next to get to the next screen. Any questions on those couple controls there? All right, that's the type of stuff we usually breeze over when we're just jumping into designs very quickly. So. All right, so the, uh, the other thing is, I just wanted to point this out here before we keep moving. Um, you do have the little button down here in the bottom right-hand corner that says plus button down here, right? And that's an easy way to start a new marketing piece. So we're gonna get back to, to this and this we're gonna move forward here. Um, now, I do wanna point out here that it says email up here in the top left-hand corner. Now, this is practically useless. So I'm just gonna save you all some time. They have built some templates where it almost looks like a MailChimp template and you would just like upload a picture and write your little blurb, right? And it would kind of fill in that template. They're not here yet. So if you try to go in and create an email, um, these, are, these are not very usable in my opinion. There are some super users who have kind of figured out a way to make them work, um, but I would not spend a lot of time here. You're just gonna find mostly frustration. This is not a finished product. All right, so I just wanna hit on that. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, um, we talked about that. I'm actually gonna start with video. And I did this yesterday, so we're gonna go through it again kind of in, in five minutes or so. But there's an opportunity in command to create these neighborhood videos. Now, raise of hands, who has seen these before or know what I'm talking about? Neighborhood videos. Okay, like four, five, six, okay, great. Uh, so just, we'll hit it really fast. So what they did was, if I click the little plus button here, in the bottom right-hand corner, that's how I start any sort of creation that I wanna do. So I'm going to click on video and I can click on next. Okay. When I click on next, it says select a neighborhood. Okay. So this is pulling from that list of neighborhoods from next door. But remember, this isn't important. This doesn't matter on this video screen here. I've got to select one. So I'm going to type in Ben Oaks, but unlike some of the other areas, you can edit the name of the neighborhood. So I'm just going to basically start out with typing in a neighborhood. I found it here. This is the one over by my house in Severna Park. I'm gonna select it. I got the little check mark here. It means I've selected it. I'm gonna click on next, okay? Which then opens up this screen. And this screen is the content that's in the video and everything in here is editable. So we're not running off of, you don't have to use the stats that, that the KW system has. So this neighborhood in this case is called Ben Oaks. But I've had other people say, um, like I, on, in Loudoun County, as an example, there are three Belmont Country Club neighborhoods. There's like three of them all right next to each other. So just, just pick one of the Belmont neighborhoods, right? doesn't matter which one, because when you come in here, I can change this and write Belmont Country Club. Right? And you'll never see that original name of the neighborhood ever again on the video. So I type Belmont, Belmont Country Club. Now this is pulling in data from that neighborhood boundary line, right? So if I'm going to change that name to, to Belmont Country Club, just go to the MLS and figure out what your average um, list and sales price are, okay? So they are gonna give you some information here. If it's correct, great, keep moving forward. If it's not, so in Ben Oaks, the neighborhood across the street from me on the water, that's about the average price for a house. 
Okay, so 782, so that looks right to me, so I'm gonna leave it there. Average home prices are on the rise. And then I can say average price per square foot if I did that calculation. Uh, let's just leave it at 293, but if you did it and the numbers were different, you can edit that there. And average price per square foot is holding steady as an example. Now, I wanna point this out here, which is number of homes for sale is correct. So from Ben Oaks, it's two. Average days on market is pulling only from these two properties. So that's why you sometimes come in here and it says 72 days. Well, no, it's 72 days for the two overpriced listings, right? On average in that neighborhood, it's six days, okay? So just remember that and you can come in here and you can edit that and say six days on market. Then it pulls in a couple of these neighborhood features, okay? Um, and I have no idea where they come from. So I'm not sure why these three come up for Ben Oaks, nor do I think any of the three are correct. Uh, so I'll leave historic but I can X out on into gardening and politically engaged. And I can do this little drop down here and you can click on a few other ones, right? So I can say a uh, dog loving neighborhood and I can say it is also a fitness oriented neighborhood, okay? So you do have to select three of them there for the way that this template is set up. Now I saw, I don't know who Samsung SM is, but I saw you raised your hand. Do you have a question? Do you know who that is? You're muted, so you have to unmute yourself. I'm gonna go to the chat box too, because I got one showing. Uh, do other agencies have access to next door neighborhood stats? So Frank, no, what it is basically is next door gives us the map. And then our MLS feed from Smarter Agent looks inside of that map area and pulls out that data. So it's not next door giving us the information, next door is simply giving us the neighborhood boundaries. All right, so let's just finish this up real quick, because we're gonna keep moving today on a couple different things. I'll click on agent information here. This is pulling from the marketing profile. So if you've done that correctly, I should have in my face and my name and information here, and then my brokerage information. So I've got my license number and then an ownership statement. And I'm gonna simply gonna click on next. And as I do that, it's now gonna create this little neighborhood video for me. It's about a minute long. Actually, I think it's exactly one minute long. And it's a pre-created template. They've got other ones coming. So right now it's just this one video, but there are more video templates coming. I've seen them in the QA version. Um, so they'll get updated there. Hi, I'm Emily. Emily question what's going on? for you. Yeah. Um, is there anywhere in this video that says it's neighborhood? Like, is there a reason we couldn't do like Loudoun County no. statistics? Exactly. Okay. You, so that's what I'm saying. Pick a neighborhood and then you can make this whatever you want. Okay. Okay. I wasn't sure if there was somewhere in here that says the neighborhood of blah, which then you can't really do county. <laughs> well, we're going to watch it. So let's figure it out. Okay. Right? So you guys can <laughs> see here where, remember it started out with Ben Oaks, but I changed that. So now it says whatever I wanted to. So to Emily's point, it could say, welcome to Loudoun County. Um, and then if you hit play here, it's gonna give you a little preview of the video. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but. So it says around the uh, neighborhood. Okay. All right, so it says around the neighborhood, but I believe that's the only place it shows up. So cool. I don't think someone would notice that. So I would, I would go ahead and launch yeah. Loudoun County. I don't think that's something that would stop me. So Great. does that mean you can pick up several neighborhoods? No, so you only pick one. So you're picking one neighborhood. Well, uh, let's go back and try it real quick. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this again real fast because these are good videos. Let's, let's just try to figure it out. So I'm gonna hit next here. So I'm gonna type in Ben Oaks. Uh, it used to be one, but the only reason I'm, I may be thinking you might be right is because I can select that and then select that. Nope, okay, so it's just one. All right, so when I try to do it, it only lets me select one neighborhood, okay? Now, when I click on save there, it'll come into this section, right? So I'll be able to go there and I'll be able to pull it up. Um, and in campaigns, you can just suck that right into campaigns. So we're not going to go in there, but you'll see in campaigns, it says pull from design library. You'd be able to click on that. Now here, I want you to notice again, on these three little dots here, you have a different one that says download. And so this is how you can download that video and put it on Facebook. Okay. So if you wanted to do something like that, that's what you're going to do. You're going to download it first and then you'll upload to Facebook as a video. And then that one minute video will post on your business page or whatever you're going to do. Okay. There's also giving you this little quick button here. It says using campaigns. So that would be a paid ad or I can share it on social and that would go through just like posting it to my business page through the Facebook connection. All right. So that's just, just go play with it. Right. I think it's pretty, pretty self-explanatory once you go do one or two. Um, but that's how you can create one of these little neighborhood videos. So I know people that run like business pages for certain neighborhoods, or if you search Facebook, right, you probably find a, a, a neighborhood page on Facebook or something. You can create a video for that and post it on that page if you're allowed to post something like that. Kyle, 
Yes. I tried to email that to myself this morning and it wouldn't go through the file was enormous. Okay. So the file's too big, right? Because a lot of email servers have um, uh, limits on email. My suggestion is just download it to your computer, upload it to your Google Drive. Okay. Okay. And then from your Google Drive, you can drag and drop that thing kind of wherever you need to. So Cheryl, let me ask you a question if you don't mind answering. What was the purpose of emailing it to yourself? I was testing it. Okay, because, well, because have, I, I was thinking I wanted to send it to my client over in Penderbrook. Gotcha. Um, and so I was testing it out on myself and it just didn't work. Okay, so what I would suggest is, um, and this is actually probably a good class for a whole kind of a separate class. I don't want to go too sideways here. But what I mentioned yesterday was, is if I download this video here, okay, I could then upload it to YouTube and kind of start like a library of neighborhood videos, right? And then when I send an email to somebody, I can just say, hey, Cheryl, check out this neighborhood, check out your neighborhood stats, right? With a, like a little link there and they'd be able to click on it and watch the video, okay? So until okay, we can yeah. kind of embed that into it, that's, that's kind of your option. And forgive my um, lack of knowledge on YouTube. You helped me upload those six videos that I have. Yes. So this would just go into my video catalog. Yep, yep. So right? you're just like when you have a channel and remember everyone has oh, a YouTube right. channel through your KW email. Mm -hmm. so, yep. so if you log in your kid email, you have this little waffle, you can click on that and go to YouTube and upload them there. Okay. Okay. Now this is a little bit further down that line, but Cheryl, what you could do is you can actually create like a channel or a playlist playlist within your YouTube channel. So you could have like neighborhood videos and kind of log them all there. Okay. Um, which is an option for to look at. All right. So that is video. So go and play with that. When we post this video, if you guys have any questions, let me know. Kyle, uh, yep, Kyle quick question. Yes. Uh, I played around with trying to do other videos. Hang on a minute. I got to turn my speaker off. So Carl, you're muted still. No, I can't hear you. Are you on now? I am now. Okay, go ahead. Sorry, uh, Susan and I are sitting close together. So, uh, the only way, uh, I understand you can put another video on there, like a particular video of your, the home you're selling. Did you really have to go around it with HTML code? Is that still the case? That's, that is still the case, yep. Now, Carl, if you guys hang on at the end of this call for like five minutes, I'll show you how I would do that. Okay, great. Okay, Thanks. if I go into HTML code, I'm going to go sideways here. So stick around to the end, and I'll jump in, and I'll answer that question. Okay, thanks. All right, perfect. All right, so let's stay on this part of it here. So that's your video. Now let's go and, and do into the we brand suite, which is most of the marketing materials, okay? So this is if you wanted to create a flyer, a postcard, a social media post, right? All those types of things. We're going to be in designs again. We're going to click the little plus button here. And you're really going to focus on these two, social and print. So we're going to start with social. So I'm going to click on social and it kind of highlights a little bit. It's kind of hard to see. It doesn't look that obvious, but you click on it. I'm on social. I would like to point out here, there is the little option here that says import photos and text from a listing. So um, if you're going to be going to create a just listed postcard about a particular listing, I could select that here, find my listing, and it saves me a step in the future. Now, I do not have to select this. So I could say social, go browse some of the different templates, and then find my listing once I'm inside there. Okay, so this is kind of just a six in one hand, half dozen in another. So I'm going to click it, right? So if I do import photos, I'm going to click on next, and it's going to pop out this screen here where I can search for a listing. And remember, this is one of the big advantages, I think, over something like Canva. So here, I'm gonna click on all listings and make sure that this always is on all listings, no matter what screen you're trying to find MLS listings on. Okay, it does not, when you click on only my listings, this doesn't work for anybody. So click on all listings, and then you're gonna simply search the name or the address, right, of your listing. The more you type out, the better you, you're going to get. So if you can type out the whole address, you should be able to find that listing. Now, in the designs applet, I've been able to find sold listings from three years ago. Okay, so some of the other applets only allow you to pull in like active listings. It's kind of different in each applet. In designs, um, I can pull up uh, pending and sold listings going back as far as like two or three years. So if I wanted to create some sort of graphic, you should be able to find them in here. Like as an example, the house that I bought with my wife three years ago now um, is right here, okay, that we fully renovated. So we bought this house from George, who was a listing agent in 2018, 
and it's still there. Okay, so I just want to kind of show you as an example that that, that would be there. So again, find your address. I'm going to do Lake Heron Drive. So Kyle, it's not just your listing. You can put any address in. Yeah, so it's going to pull every listing from every company in the MLS okay. database that it has. Now, that does not mean you have permission to use these. Okay, so be aware of that, that if you have a listing, Linda, I can't just go in and create marketing materials for you. Now, what I have seen agents do is kind of partner up on this. Right. And I've had agents in our office at least in Fairfax call me and say, Hey, if Linda gives me permission to market her home. Am I allowed to do that? Yes, because we're under the same brokerage agreement. Right. So the property is listed with Kellogg's Fairfax Gateway. So as long as the agent gives that permission, then you can. Um, the other advantage I've seen here is uh, if DD is going to hold an open house for me, um, I don't need to send DD the pictures so she can create the marketing materials. She can go to designs and find my listing and pull the photos from there. And Kyle. Yes. Um, so as far as coming soon goes, mm -hmm. um, I have found that I, when I go in and try to like kind of get ahead of the game, uh, yep. if I know something is going to go live, and this is more or less with print yep. um, postcards, I, I can't find any of the coming soon. So the reason that happens is because Smarter Agent, the company that Keller Williams owns, where we pull all the data, they've got to be able to pull it from the MLS. And I, I know this for a fact in Northern Virginia, and I assume it's the same down in Richmond, Tim, is our MLS does not syndicate out ten, or coming soon listings. Correct. So because of that, we don't have them in the system because we can't grab them from them. Okay? okay. So that's why you can't find coming soon. Now, please remember, no matter if it's campaigns or it's designs, you can upload any pictures. So if you're doing coming soon, you're probably going to have to upload the photos that you've got from uh, the photographer. Yes. Okay. So as soon as it goes to a point where we can syndicate and just like Zillow or realtor.com gets the listing, we can get the listing. It'll show up here, but it can't okay. get there. can't get there until, until that point. Okay. All right. So what I did was I selected my listing, right? I, I don't see it anywhere. So a lot of people are like, Hey, I clicked on select my listing and then nothing happened. It brought me to the screen. This is what's supposed to happen. So now we're on designs. And remember, we clicked on social. So I want to point out a few things here. Um, the first thing I want to point out is on this screen is if you're going to create a marketing piece, because that's where everyone's eyes kind of go. First step is you're going to select the category of marketing you're trying to create. So if I just took a listing, I could click on listings. And then I've got a couple of options here. Do I want to do a for sale, a just listed, a price update, right? So let's say I want to do a for sale marketing piece. Once I click for sale, then it shows me that I can do a Facebook for sale. I can do an Instagram for sale. I can do an Instagram stories, right? And they're all sized properly to that marketing channel. Okay. So select your category first, and then you're going to select which social media channel are you creating this marketing for. Now, the other thing is if we were on the print side, we would see flyer, postcard, door hanger. So just remember that's the difference between the two, right? Um, digital and, and, uh, and, and not so right print. Now, before we jump in to actually do a marketing piece, I want to look at a couple other things. The first is this library button right here on the far right hand side. So everyone should, should be able to see here on the right hand side, it says library. This should be the first thing you do if you're using designs because it'll save you a lot of time. And what you can do is click on library and it's going to open up and you can put in your information right under your details section. But more, most importantly, there is an images tab here and there's a logos tab here. And I can upload my headshots or my team photos here that I want to be able to pull and use every single time I create a marketing piece. So these are things I'm going to use forever. This is not where I'm uploading a picture of a house that I want to create a marketing piece for. Make sense? So those are your photos there. And then logos, um, you, can, you can upload four different logos, right? So you might do two of your office logos and then two of your personal logos if you had them, All right? And that's your option, you have four. Now remember, you can add as many photos as you want when we get into create the marketing piece. So this is the, I get it every single time. Now I wanna do a quick aside here. I get this question a lot. Where do I get my office logos from? So the best place to go is go to kwconnect.com. All right, so this is to get your DBA logos for your office. You go to kwconnect.com. Underneath of the resources tab, you will see it says 
marketing. All right, now if you come into marketing, this is gonna bring us to this screen here. We're gonna click on logos and branding. So let me just recap, KW Connect, resources, marketing, logos and graphics. Click right there and then there'll be a, there'll be a little search bar. And so I can click on, uh, it says right here, it says DBA logo. It says search market center name. And this is where you should be able to type in your market center. I'll just go down every once in a while. All right, for some reason, I'm, when I'm typing these in, they, they're all here for our market centers now. So try this on your side, type in your market center number, you should download a zip file that has all those different logos in it. Okay, so those are your logos. Any questions about the library and adding in your image or adding in your logos? All good. Okay. All right. Last thing before we actually go create a marketing piece is my designs up top here. So you'll see when we come in, it defaults to templates. And I get that little red line right there. I just want to point out a couple features here. If I click on my designs, you get this screen here. And this screen allows you to create a design from blank. Now, the reason I'm pointing this out is uh, I had a, someone called me the other day and said, this doesn't work for my printer. Like my marketing person said it needs to be a certain you know, size by size. So in here, you can do a start from blank and you can either get like a blank Instagram size or you can do custom size. So you can say, I need to make a custom graphic that is by pixels or by inch, right? So if I want to make a flyer, if you get specific uh, you know, things there, uh, measurements, you can start with a custom size, right? And start with a blank sheet. You can also import a PDF. Um, now, the more intense or more busy that that PDF file is, the less effective this tool. But the idea behind it would be you can take a, a flyer that you currently like and upload it as a PDF, and command will actually break it apart for you and make it editable. So you can change the text, be able to switch out the photos. So it's kind of a cool reverse feature of designs. And I've had some really good success with it. So I uploaded like a, a Canva PDF. Let's see if I can find it just by scrolling through. Um, and I was able to actually like reverse engineer that and it broke everything into different pieces. This one right here. So I know it's pretty simple, but it was like a little PDF flat one. When I did that, I can move the donut around. I could change all the text. I could change the colors. Um, and that started as a PDF. So just want to throw that out there that that's something you could use. I, have, I do not think it's going to work great if you want to upload a 37 page listing consultation. That's a PDF. That's going to be pretty difficult to do. Okay. So just know that's a little more simple. And uh, we'll get there. All right. So go back to templates. Well, that's great because I don't know if a lot of agents on here use smart charts at all, but sometimes those um, reports that you pull, you can't edit. Yep. So being able to upload that and putting your contact information would be great. Yeah. And then remember, you can upload a PDF. And then if your smart charts in the middle or whatever it's going to be, you mm -hmm. can then put like blocks, right? Like, and just put a white block above it and type over top of that white block. And so you're getting rid of all the busyness of it, but cutting out the piece that you want. Uh, the question. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry, Emily. Um, you were talking about making your own design from a from a blank template. Yes. Like for example, if I wanted to do Instagram, we have to put in pixels or inches. How do we know what that is? Are there some guides for that? So what I would do is is you can see here that when I click on Start to do it from blank, they've mm -hmm. got Instagram, Twitter, door hanger. So if you click this little arrow here, it's going to give you the correct size for Instagram. Oh. So use those pre, so this is just going to give me a white screen. Okay. It's not going to have any sort of template built. And that's where I can kind of start from scratch. So use the template You kind of see it there, right? Cheryl, it's kind of like uh, block okay. there. Yep. Um, and now I can start adding in, you know, shapes and colors or whatever it's going to be, but you're going to pick your pixel or size. If your marketing person's giving you those specific credentials. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. So let me get back here to designs. Okay. All right, so let's go back to templates here. A few things I want to point out on the listing side, which is one, um, we're on the social side. Oh, let me go back here. Switch it over to print. All right, guys, give me one second here. Let me just reset where we were so no one gets confused. All right, so plus. Social, next. 
move back to the same screen we just were a second ago. All right, so when you guys think designs, you probably think marketing pieces, postcards, flyers, those types of things. I just wanna point out in here that they're uploading a lot more than just that. So as this loads up here, um, if you go to something like Business Basics, they've got a couple email signatures in here. They just added a new one, right? It used to just be this red one here. So if you didn't have like an email signature, if you wanted to go kind of create your own email signature, they're giving you a couple templates for that. Um, social branding, these are your cover photos, right? So if you have a business page or a LinkedIn page and you don't use a cover photo there because it never is sized properly, they've created some for you that you could start with. Okay, so I just wanted to point that out. There's also some cover photos in there. And if anyone watched that video I posted last week, if I go down here to the pivot section, right, this is where you see those virtual backgrounds for our Zoom call. Okay, so I don't, I don't see anyone using one here. But if you wanted to go in here and put in your little logo on this little, you know, uh, frame back here, then you could use that as your virtual background and have your logo over top your shoulder or something. So they're constantly adding stuff here. Um, so just think all marketing um, is here. Now, under listings, I'm not going to go fully into these, but I want to point out where they are. Um, on the print side is where I'll show you, because I get this question a lot. If you're looking for the listing or the buyer consultations, they're underneath the print side. Okay. Um, so even if you're going to use it for like a virtual consultation, you're just going to download it as a PDF. It's not on the social side. It's on that side. So here's what we're going to do. Um, there's also a new section down here they call it. It says new design. So we're actually just going to go down there. And this is where I can see the most recent designs that KW has put in. So I'm going to come up here and let's say we're going to create a for sale um, Facebook graphic. Okay, let's say I want to use this newest one here. Uh, if I want to use that template and start, I'm going to click the use button. Okay, so I click that little red use button there and it's going to open up this editing tool for us. Now a few tricks here when you're actually editing. Now my experience with this has been the first time I did it, I was like, this stinks. This is hard to do. Second time I did it, I was like, all right, this isn't so bad, but this is still annoying. Third time I did it, I was like, all right, this is getting way easier. So give it a couple times, all right? If you've gotten that early frustration, it's just a little bit of the clicks. So now I'm in this screen, which is the actual editing view of the template that I selected. Everything on here is editable. So I can change every word, every logo, all of this down here, everything is editable. Now, I would like to point out before we start editing, we've got these five tabs, images, text, icons, logos, and KWLS. Okay. Now under eight uh, images, that's the one I'm, I've selected. I know that because it's got this like little bit of a darker gray color here and I have uploaded my headshot. So that's why it's here in the my library section. That's why you want to complete the my library so you don't have to upload those photos often. If I come here to uh, company under images, you've got all these different stock photos. So these are royalty free photos that you can use in any of your marketing pieces. So if I clicked on lifestyle at home, it's going to give me all these different pictures. Just remember that these are all royalty free and you guys can use all these different pictures. Okay. Now I find that this comes in most handy when I'm editing a listing or a buyer consultation. That's like 42 pages long and has all these different stock images for this piece. I'm going to upload a picture of my property that I'm, I'm listed, right? So I don't really need any of these here, but just know that they're there. And then I can come here to add and I can upload any image. So I'm going to go back to Kim's question. Let's say it's a coming soon property. I can't find it in the KWLS here. I can simply go to images and add and drag and drop that picture from my photographer so I can create my marketing piece. I've got text. So my library, I pulled in, you know, I typed in like my website name and my email address. So now I can quickly add those here. I do want to point out though, if you go to banners, this is giving you some of the, the text like you'll see in Canva. Right, so pre-created little text boxes here, and I can pull one of these in. So I'll just click on this one. So if I click on that, it'll pull into my graphic, right? And now I can edit this, I can move this around, I can do whatever I want to do with that graphic. Okay, so know that those are there. Oops, that All right, so that's that. Icons, uh, a couple things here. I don't have any in my library, so we're not going to see any there. Um, you do have some stock icons here, though. So if you go in, you've got some, like an Instagram little stock icon. You've got Facebook little icon there. So if you're looking for some of those icons without having to upload them, just know that they're in icons underneath the stock. Logos. So under logos, these are the ones that I have from my library. Okay, and while we're on this, I want to show you the difference between a JPEG and a PNG. Okay, so I've just added two different logos to my screen. 
This is something I know most of you probably know, but I just want to hit it again. This right here, this is a, both of these are photo files. This one is a JPEG. This one is a PNG. What's the obvious difference between the two? Background. The background. Okay. See through. So, see through, exactly. So the, the PNG file is transparent, meaning that I can move this around on the screen and I'm able to see behind the text. This one is a JPEG. And so it blocks everything. All that white space is actual white space that I can't do anything with. This guy's looks better and cleaner than this. Okay, just kind of a marketing 101 thing. So if I have the option, I want to try to use the PNG. Now, if you follow the instructions to go get your office logos we had discussed, you'll download a zip file. And in that zip file, you have both JPEGs and PNGs. So make sure you're using the PNG file and you'll have this effect rather than that one there. Any questions on that? Okay, keep moving. Now, um, I'm gonna come back to this here, right? Last one I wanna go to is logos. So I did logos for my library, but I do wanna point out here that if I click on company and you click on, um, I think it's under miscellaneous here, you've got the Realtor Association and the Equal Housing Opportunity. So if those need to be on your marketing pieces, you can grab them from here. I can also go back and I've got a bunch of the KW ones as well. Okay, so if I go here, I've got like some of the different labs logos you could use or something if you wanted to, uh, but all that's under logos there. Now, remember I clicked on the box to pull up my listing from the very beginning. But let's say you did not do that. So you did not pick a specific listing. This is the KWLS tab is the MLS feed into designs. So if I click on KWLS here, I can now search for my, my listing, right? So I type in 1140 Lake Heron, I'll be able to find it here. Now, I clicked off, remember, and had to restart that process. So if I had just clicked on it from the very beginning, like we had done, I wouldn't have to select it here, it'd already be selected. But now I've got all of the photos, right? And the listing details from my listing direct from the MLS. So I don't have to upload any of that. Any questions about any of these five tabs over here on the left? Kyle, is the resolution, if you were doing print, is the resolution on these pictures high enough? Um, so my suggestion whenever you do print is upload the original full, full, uh, file from your printer. All right. I am not going to, if I have the option and it just takes me two more minutes, I'm going to go with the option that I know is going to have the clearest resolution. Anytime you syndicate out from the MLS, these pictures are being compressed. So it is going to be a more compressed file than the original photo. But it should be okay for social media. Absolutely. Social okay. media, I could care less, right? This will look okay. totally fine there. But if I'm going to do a jumbo postcard, especially the bigger postcards, the smaller ones, a four by six, it probably is not going to matter as much. But if you guys start to go to some of these larger size postcards, I would always be uploading the original photo file. Okay. All right. So let's do a couple of quick edits, a couple, couple tips here. So the first is, um, let me go back to this screen. So the first thing is click on the photo, right? And if I click on the photo here, Okay, so when I click on the picture, a couple chats coming, let me just check these before I start digging in. Uh, I missed the first half of the meeting, will I be able to view this again? Yep, so um, it'll be recorded and it'll be on my Alliance Technology Facebook page. I'll have that up later on this afternoon. Uh, Cheryl, so what's the best way to steal some icons from Canva and bring them over to command? So remember, you can upload any picture you want. So if you can download it as a picture from Canva, then upload it into command as a JPEG and you'll be able to bring it in and use it over here. All right, so I selected the, the um, the picture here. Okay, so I'm gonna go to KWLS. So you can see that now that I have this checker mark all the way around this, this graphic here, if I go over to any of my picture files, right, I've got a new button and it says replace image. So I'm gonna select the picture I wanna replace first, then I come over my picture and I say I wanna use this one. So I click replace image and you can see it just changes it out in the graphic, right? And now it's a picture of my property. Now, quick little tip here that a lot of people miss. Once you bring a picture in, if you double click on that picture, you're able to crop it and move it around. Okay, so if I double, double click on that picture, I can now say, you know what, I want less of the ceiling, right, and move that picture up. And then I click on done, and you'll see it rearrange that picture in that frame for me to be what I want it to do. Okay. Now, a couple of different options here. One is 
I have the, um, this was the, the template, right? One, two, three, Spruce Road, City State, and um, City State. So I can either highlight that, and I have a few options. I can either double click in here and change the text, right? My second option is, if I wanted to, remember that I've got photos and I've got listing details here. And under listing details, it has my address broken out into its own line. Okay, so let me point that out again. So we're under photos, under listing details, and you can see that when I, when I uncheck or I click off of the text box, I only have a plus button. But once I check, uh, once I click on a check box or a text box here, I get that replace button shows up. And so now I can go to my address and say replace it with my address. Yeah, I just did that. And it just replaces the address on the postcard. Now, it also might be quicker for me literally just to retype out the address. So you decide, but for some of these things, that's a quick little button, quick little tip. All right, now, uh, the other thing I'm gonna do is I gotta come down here and I've gotta edit this text down here. All right, now I don't have it broken down so I can do it that easily. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight that entire text box. This is where I'm gonna show you another way to edit text. And this is my favorite way. When you click on another uh, text box, again, you get that checker mark around it. Up top here, you get this editing tool. And this editing tool allows you to change the, the font, uh, make it bold, right? Change the size of the text. But when you click on a text box, you also get this little icon that shows up that says typewriter. And I can click on this typewriter button and it opens up like a Word document where I can quickly just change out the text. So I'm gonna click that typewriter button and I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna do two bedrooms, two bathrooms, right? 1,145 square feet. $275,000, right? So I'm just gonna edit this really quickly. So 275, comma, zero, zero, zero. Built in to 1985, all right? So I'm just gonna retype it there in the typewriter section. Then I click on save changes. And when I come back in, voila, there you go, okay? So instead of clicking in and trying to mess with back and front and up and down, that's the easiest way I've found to actually edit text. All right, so that's your typewriter. Let's see what we got there, I see a chat coming in. Um, can you add a font to designs? Yeah, absolutely. So let me show you this. Um, that's that last piece there. Now let me do two other things then I'll show you a, a little bit more customization. Last thing I need to do here is change my DBA logo, right? Because that says Keller Williams DBA, that's just a placeholder. So I'm gonna do the same thing I've been doing. I click on KW DBA. And when I do that, I'm gonna go over my logo section under my library, because that's where I've uploaded my logos. And again, you will see that I have the replace button. So I'm just gonna simply click on replace, right? And it's gonna bring over my Fairfax Gateway logo. I'm gonna move it so it's in the right spot and check off and there you go. Now I've got Fairfax Gateway. Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back for a second. Remember, after we created the design, I showed you we could just make a copy. So if I upload like things like this one time and, and I just make a copy, then I don't have to go back that second time and upload my logo. I'm just gonna change the picture and change the address and the terms of that property. All right. Now what's something that's missing from this graphic? You guys see anything that's missing? What's that? Picture. Picture information. Okay, so I maybe wanna put my picture or you know whatever it's gonna be, right? My contact info. <laughs> So let's do a couple different things here. What I, what, I, what I want to first point out is up here, when we click off of, a, of a, uh, a design, we get this little box that shows up and it says you want to do a drawing, shapes, frames, or text. Okay. So just remember that shapes are exactly that. Frames are for pictures in particular. Okay. I'm getting a little bit of... Let me All right. Mm -hmm. Kevin. All right, so um, back over here. So we got shapes we can put on. I'll do that in just a second. We've also got frames. So I want to point this out. These frames are for pictures. So they're, they're pre-designed. So I got this little circle right here, and I can pull this little circle into my graphic. I can shrink it down and move it around a little bit. Um, now in this case here, right, I don't like where that pillow is, so I'm going to cover up that pillow on that listing photo. I'm going to drop that little circle, and now Okay, I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna click on this image, and let's see here, where is my image tag? 
All right, there's a little bit of a bug going on right now, guys, just so you know. Usually these five don't disappear. So that's a little bit strange to me. There it is there. Let's go ahead and flip off this. So cancel this. Okay, this way, no, did it again. All right, you see where that image tab is right there? That should always be there. And for some reason, when I click on this here, it goes away. All right, well. I find that it, it goes away from me a lot also when I'm designing. Interesting, all right, I'm gonna have to report that and I'm not, I've not experienced that yet. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna kind of work the system a little bit. So I'm gonna go back here. Let me pull in one of those frames again. I'm gonna do this little circle. All right, I'm gonna shrink this circle down. So if I was able to grab my pictures, and it looks like it is there for some reason, this is the picture, and I can grab it from this little section over here. So there it is now, it's, it is there. I'm gonna drag it over, and what I can do is I can drag and drop this photo, and I should be able to drop it right into this photo frame. Let me delete that. It's making me look bad, sorry. It's a weird bug. All right, there we, there we go, okay. So this is what I was trying to do, this is usually very simple. Add a frame, I got the little circle right there. Then you should be able to add your agent photo and you're simply gonna drag and drop that agent photo into that little frame right there. And you can see how it formats it down to the little circle. And now I can move that around on the page, right, and drop my head down here in the bottom right hand corner. Okay, so that's how you can add a little bit of a picture. Now here's another little tip. If I wanted to put some text on here, I might wanna put in, a little bit of a box first. Okay, so I added a shape, which was this little box. I can now move this box around. So let's say I wanted to add it down here at the very bottom, okay? When I drop that box, everything is, is customizable in, term, times, in terms of size. So I can move this around, right? Make that a little bit smaller. Um, now that I've created the box, if I click on it or selected it, I can change the color. So if I go back up top here, I can change that to red, right? Match the rest of the red that's on this graphic. Now I'm gonna then go back and I'm gonna grab some text, right? So I could start with body text here and it pulls the text onto the graphic. I can move that on top of the shape. Right now it's a little bit hard to see that, that uh, black text there. This is where I can go back up and I can change the color of that text and make it white, right? And I can now use that typewriter tool and come in here and say, call me at 410-812-4495, right, and hit save. Kyle, where was that typewriter tool? I'm sorry, I was writing stuff down when no, you were talking about No problem, so whenever you click on a text box, so this is either one that's already in there or one that you drag in, when you click on the text box, up top here in the editing tool, you'll see the typewriter uh, little section right here, next to the Oh, box. cool, okay, right. got it, thank you. Yep, All right, so I could do something like that. Now, I could go back and edit this text because my name's missing, All right? So I could go back in and, and do that if I want to, so I could come in here and do, uh, space, and I can do Kyle Holland, and hit save changes. This is where I wanna show you another editing tool. So just so you guys see there, I've got my name on there with my uh, my phone number, but it's off center, right? It's, it's, it's centered, to the, not centered, it's on the left-hand margin. So up top here, again, you have all of your normal editing tools. One of them says text alignment, and I could say center that, right? And then center in that graphic there. Now I've got my name centered on top of my phone number. And the last thing I wanna point out here is, I can click on the little red box, right? So I'm on the text box there, but if I click on the red box and get that highlighted, I just wanna point out up here, there's another little setting that's called opacity. And that's where I can change the opacity and I can move it down a little bit, right? So I can still see the rug and still see the couch, but my name and my phone number and stuff like that jump out just a little bit, okay? So that's how you're gonna use the shapes, the frames, the text up top, all good? Any questions on just creating kind of this simple graphic here? Okay. Kyle, I have a quick question. Yes, ma'am. If you wanted to take this red box and center it, is there a guide that shows you where that it's centered? No, so it is kind of like Canva that if you have other things, right? So like this right here is the center of the screen. See that bar that pops up? Ah, there it is, okay. So it will, based on your other um, features of the marketing piece, but like down here in the left corner, it's got nothing to relate to. It knows I'm just trying to drop something. So it will give you the center, the center tool if you're going for that type of point. Okay. Okay. You're welcome. All right, you can also layer, just so everybody knows. So like this little red box here is kind of overlaid over top of my picture. You can see it there in the corner. So if I wanted to change that, I could click on the red box and then I've got layers up here. Right, and I could say arrange, and I could say send it back. 
okay? And then it'll go behind my, my headshot or something like that, okay? So just know that those tools are there. All right, here's one fun thing. I showed this yesterday, but this is usually the highlight of the class that I teach, which is um, there is a website that, that I like to use called Remove. Some of you guys know exactly where I'm going already. Remove.bg. All right, if you type it in just like I put there, remove.bg. What is cool about this website is I found it to be free. Um, I've never had to upgrade anything and I've done this 500 times, so don't pay for anything. What it will do is it will remove the background out of your graphic. So if I do upload image here, I can then go to my computer and find a picture. And I did this yesterday, so I'm just gonna grab the same one we did yesterday, which was I know in here I've got a picture of Leroy Hauser, great guy from down in Richmond. So I click on Leroy's picture there and I click on open and you will see that it's going to take the original photo file with the background, right? And it cuts out that entire background. And now I'm able to come down here and click download. All right. It's going to download that, this, this version to my computer. And that now allows me over in my design section. If I didn't want to use a picture like this, I could delete this out. Okay. Um, and then I could come in here and I'll do add and it says add an image. So I can click on drop and add an image and I'm going to drag and drop in that picture. Actually, it's right here that I just downloaded. So I can add that to designs. It's going to upload here and now it'll bring in that picture of Leroy. So I go ahead and click on it and you can see now it cut out that background of that photo. So as I move Leroy around on, on my picture here, um, I can see behind him, right? So, so that's how people work that little cutout type thing, make it look like that. Couple tips here, if you're a team, this is really cool. If you just have everyone stand up against the same colored wall and take a picture of everyone standing, you can actually like merge everyone together and to make it one team photo. Um, and some other things we talked about doing, doing on this is, you know, you could do something like your yard sign. If you had a picture of your yard sign um, and you cut out the background, then you could kind of like overlay your yard sign and move that around on all your different marketing pieces. So that might be an idea as well. All right, any questions on remove.bg? All good. Okay. Last thing here, guys, is name it properly. All right. So if I was going to then go post this to you uh, to Facebook, I'm going to come in here. I'm going to do you know for sale Lake Heron. Probably put the address. So in hopes that I get a neighbor's property for sale, I can find it quickly. All right. So make sure you name it properly here. It is auto saving every time you do something. So that's the nice part. You shouldn't like create something and then if your power on your computer dies. You didn't lose all that work. It is auto saving as you're going and building the document. Up top here, I got a download button and I can download this as a JPEG or a PNG. Um, and there's a couple extra little settings down here that you can do. I always go up to the highest quality photo as possible. And then I can do start download and download that file to my computer. I'm gonna discourage you from using this share button right here. So if I, I have the option, it makes it look like it's nice and easy for me excuse me, where I can share this, this graphic and it will let me share it to Facebook. The reason I don't want you doing this is actually, it's not you sharing the, the post. It's WeBrand posting this on your page. And so it makes it look like a hyperlink. And so it's just the post, it's clickable. And when you click it, it just opens up the post again. So it's a bad user experience because it makes it seem to the consumer that there's gonna be, um, you know, it, it makes it seem like to the user that there's like a website or something they're going to. And so I just don't like it. I prefer you to see you download the link, upload that photo, and then put in the post, you know, visit my website and put the URL for this listing in that post. All right. So that's the best way that I would share this on that type of like personal Facebook page. Now let me do this real quick. I want to go back. So I'm going to do don't save. I just want to point out on the print side, um, real fast, a couple things. So I came all the way back out again, came back to my designs. I'm going to click on the little plus symbol here. And instead of doing social, I'm going to do print. And I'm going to go to next. And it's going to open up a screen that looks very similar to the one we were just on. But remember, it's all the print side. So it's postcards, flyers, door hangers, those types of things. So let's let that load up for just a second. All right, so here, that's why I've got like under listings now, if I go to for sale, instead of it being Facebook, Instagram, it says door hangers, flyers, standard postcards, bifolds, trifolds. So you can actually create brochures, right? Three page brochures for all of your different listings if you wanted to do something like that. 
um, flyers. So here's all your one page flyers that they've created for you. Again, if I go in and say, hey, I like this one and I do use, remember this is where that KWLS little link can actually come in handy because you got more than one photo section, you've got multiple photo sections. While this loads up, I see a couple of chats here, so let's see what they are there. Um, been having trouble with frames lately too. Yep, before you go, how to add a font, please. Yep, so I'll show you here, Paul. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. All right, so this is, this is my for sale. Again, I'm gonna come down really quickly here and I might just click on this picture here. I'll go up to my headshot, I can replace that image. Right, I can come in here and retype my name. But this is where, if I go to, let's do the font thing real quick. So if I actually click off of this, um, Paul, you can go here to text and do add like title or subtitle, it doesn't matter. This is just giving you a, a text to start with. So once I'm on this text, remember you can go up here and this is where you can change the font. So if I wanted to come up here, you have a whole bunch of fonts to choose from and I can change the font to be dancing script, right? And I can double click in there and say, you will love living here, okay? I can also click on the little box here and I get this little tilt, you know, so I could tilt that and I can move it up top. Now it's a little bit hard to see that black text there. So if I wanted to, I could try to drop a shape behind it or something like that, but that's how you add text to the actual graphic itself. Um, is the only way to get to add the library button via design that you are editing? Um, clarify that question for me, Carl. Can you? Yeah, what I, I was trying to, you know, you, you, I realized I had not added it. Oh, you got, are you on soon? Sorry. I can hear you. Uh, yep. So you're saying you hadn't added anything yet to your library, correct? Yeah, when I was, yeah, I was, when I went into designs, the only way I could see to get to that library was to actually open a design like you're creating it. And then you got to the red library button. Okay, so what, yeah, so what you're gonna do is go in designs, exactly. You're gonna click the little plus button because this actually takes you into WeBrand, which is kind of like the third party. You gotta get there to be able to do the library. So you are correct. You gotta get into that section before you can add anything to the library. All right, I saw one more chat here. Um, see you, Linda, no problem. Linda's got a roll. Uh, I wanna import my own font, not currently in designs. Ooh, I don't think you can do that, Paul. Uh, I believe that they have a, just like the photos, people have to pay for these fonts. I don't know if everyone realizes that. Um, they've got to pay for you know, these fonts, whoever created them. So I do not know of a way to upload your own font if it's not here in the system to use your own font. Now, uh, this is also comes into play when you upload your own PDF. Because if you upload a PDF and it does not have that font, it'll change the font to something similar. Okay, so just keep that in mind when you upload a PDF on that, on that note there. Last thing I was just gonna show you here, guys, is, you know, you've already kind of gotten the point, but if I go to uh, these photos and I go to KWLS again, and I search for my listing, all right, and I select this one here. You know, the advantage of having all these different photos is I can click on this picture and say, make this the cover photo. And then on my flyer, um, all right, let's make this a picture of the kitchen. Right, and then let's take this one and make this a picture of like some of the nearby restaurants in Annapolis. Okay, so it's just nice to have this KWS button here to be able to quickly change out the photos. Then again, I can change this text. So even though this starts off as a for sale marketing piece, if you like this, there's no reason at all that you can't go in here very quickly and change this into your open house flyer. Okay, everything is a template and everything is subject to change. So just keep that in mind. And then I'm just gonna pull this out a little bit so we get open house in there, and then boom, you know, we've gone from for sale to just listed. Now, last thing I wanna point out here, then I'll open up the questions. When you do a print side, right, make sure you go to get PDF. So if you're gonna, if you're gonna print this flyer and take it to an open house whenever we get back to normal again, you don't wanna do it as a photo file, that's what these two are, you wanna go get the PDF. And so I can do all designs, I wanna do high resolution print quality, download that PDF and then I can print it out in my house or send it off to whoever does my, my different flyers. Okay. 
All right, so that was a, that went by really fast. I feel like I could do a three hour session on designs almost. Um, questions on what you saw there? Anything in particular I can help you out with? Yes, uh, oh, are you only doing it through the chat? Nope, you got it, go ahead, Catherine, I can hear you. Okay, I, I came to, your, or to the webinar, I believe last week, and I created my own postcard, mm -hmm. and it looks great in command, and I wanted to save it, and I followed your directions from last time, so I could then put it in a campaign and order it, mm -hmm. but it's fuzzy. Okay. Especially Wait. around the, the text. Okay. Uh, what kind of font did you use the KWLS to upload the photos or was it the original photos? No, it was the, the ones in command that came from MLS is okay. the, is the key to do the originals. Yeah. I, anything you guys do print, I would just use that as your, if you're going to send anything to a printer, use the original photo files. Okay. So I would assume that's why, uh, Catherine, the only other thing I could kind of suggest is, just make sure you're clicking that high resolution print quality to get the highest amount of pixels you can on that photo. Okay. What else guys? Now there's a couple of little things in here. I'll just point out, right? So on the listing side, this is where you're going to find your listing presentations. I did a whole class on this that's posted on the Facebook page. So this is 28 page listing presentation and you can go through and customize that. Um, onto the buyer side, you're going to have your buyer presentations are there as well. Um, under business basics is where you can actually kind of create business cards. So they've got some different business card templates in here. If you wanted to go create your own business card, if you're going to get a new one. Um, so just again, go in here and look around every once in a while. They also do holidays, right? So you're going to see, you know, you'll see 4th of July and, and all the major holidays. They put up graphics here where you can just add in like your logo and, and launch it. So also check that out. Kyle, can you show us real quick the email signatures? Yep, so that's gonna be on the social side. Okay, so oh. it's not gonna be on the print side. Social, go to Business Basics. So under Business Basics, you'll see the two email signatures. Do those have links within if someone wants to click on it? Yep, there is a link in there. So it says like download my mobile app here and there's like a button that becomes clickable on that email signature. Hey Kyle, this is Dee Dee. I was sitting here creating mine while you were talking and I went over to grab an image and I only have three. Now I have text, um, icons and logos and the other two are gone. Yeah, so that's the, so same thing I was, that's the same thing I was experiencing here just a second ago, DD. So I don't have a great answer for that right now. That's not the way it's supposed to work. Those five should be static there. I just had a little bit of success by clicking on another photo on the screen and it popped back up. So. I know what you're saying. I don't know why that's happening. I don't have a good answer for that. Kyle, I have a question. Can you hear me? I can. Okay. Can you see? Can you see me? I can see you. Yes. Okay. So um, I don't know where, what camera is working on me. I have two computers up, but I'm, I'm showing you my business card. That's the other computer. You can't see your business card. See your face. Can you see it now? Did you just switch cameras? I did. Well, I have an iPad. Oh, you have, you have three cameras going, Paul. I do? It's, it's your third camera. There's something oh. else looking directly at, like I'm looking up straight at your face. Yep, right there. Put it in front of your face. Nope, down. Yeah. Here. Over. 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 Nope, like keep coming over towards me. Yep. Okay. <laughs> You've got three <laughs> cameras on, I think. If not, someone's spying that's, that's on you. That's my iPhone. I don't know. That's That should be off. But anyway. No, that, that's on. That's the screen we can see. The one that's down below you, kind of shooting up towards your face. Okay. So that's what I'm trying to get for my logo, and that's okay. the font I wanted. I was able to download the font free, but okay. you know, I, I get what you're saying. But how can I create this and get this into my into my information. So, you know, my suggestion is you just you probably need to go play with it just a little bit, right? There are a couple hundred fonts in here. And then what I found is, is that, um, let me just drop this into some white space here. It, it all, they also have different ones. So if I go in here and I do, you see these ones that have like little arrows, it's showing me different types of that font that are more, you know, bold that are whatever. So you just gotta spend some time in here probably and try to find the one that looks closest to the one that you want because these are ones that are available through here. Okay. Okay. Now, some of them also, once I do that, I can go to italics and it changes the look, right? So you just gotta mess a little bit because there's 150 fonts and then you can change the bold italics and it'll change the look of the font to try to get yep. close to what you're looking for. Okay. Okay. 
All right, any final questions on this? Okay, so go mess with it a little bit. I'll post the video. If you guys have questions or want to go back and rewatch the video and kind of walk through a couple of these things, obviously let me know. And if you've got questions, this is one of my favorite apps. I actually use this the most and the one I feel most comfortable with. So if you have an issue, just post on my page and just say, Kyle, I'm trying to do this because I probably have the, the tip or idea without you having to spend an hour and a half trying to figure it out. Thank you, Kyle. Perfect. All right, guys, I'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Kyle. All right, Carl, hang on for a few minutes. We're going to kick everybody else off, and then I'll help you out, all right? All right, see ya. Bye. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. All right, just give me a sec, guys. I'm going to stop the recording as well.